Are you a fan of Game of Thrones? Do you need something to fill that void in your life since Season 7 ended and we just never got more of Game of Thrones? Well, then I'm going to recommend The Witcher on Netflix. I'm going to get into my more thoughts on why I don't think this is a direct analog to Game of Thrones. The comparisons are somewhat, but they're not very, they're not a ton, so it's not the same show. It's not Netflix's Game of Thrones, though you could potentially call it that. But I'll get into that later. The Witcher is an adaptation of the book series The Witcher Saga, written by... Yeah, I'm not trying to pronounce that name. I'm just going to fuck it up if I do. Uh, specifically, this, se this season is based on the first two books, which are really more a collection of short stories rather than, um, like, full novels. Uh, and I say the first two because I'm... I I've since watching the show read the first two books, and I'm... It feels like it's based more on the first one, but there are definitely stories from the second one in there. So... I have to say it's based on both. Another thing I do want to point out, this is an adaptation of the books, not the games. So if you think that it's going to be the story of the games, you're wrong. Just throwing that out there. The story of the show is not told in a continuous fashion. That meaning there are three separate storylines following our three leads, Geralt, Yennefer, and Ciri. Now, each of these stories takes place within a set timeline, but they're told interweavingly, making the first season slightly confusing on the first time watching it through. Short version, Yennefer's story takes first, then Geralt's story, then Ciri's story. Uh, if that helps you keep them straight, great. If not, not much I can do for you. All three stories do converge at the end of the season, but up, leading up to that point, it still is slightly confusing on when exactly each of the stories takes place within the timeline. Luckily, Netflix is releasing an interactive map and a timeline to show you exactly when they take place. So I would suggest looking those up. Um, I will probably link those at the end of this video. Right, and uh, back to characters, I'm going to go through what I'm going to call the main cast because they're the characters we spend the most time with. First we have Geralt, the Witcher of the show. He claims that he doesn't really care about others that much, especially those that aren't going to pay him, though he really does care, and he has all this heart of gold. He's also bound to Ciri by Destiny, though he claims that Destiny can go fuck itself, though he ends up starting to believe in it by the end of the show. Secondly, we have Ciri, who is on the run after her homeland gets attacked and almost destroyed by the Nilf Guardians. She is bound to Geralt because uh, Geralt saved her father, and law of surprise, yada yada yada. And the final main character that we have is Yennefer. Yennefer is a sorceress who literally had her womb cut out so that she could become hot. Where I come from, we call that fucking hardcore. Yennefer is honestly one of my favorite female characters of all time because she gradually goes from doing anything to get power to realizing that she's willing to sacrifice herself for others. Each of the main characters has an amazing arc. Like I just mentioned, Yennefer's is her going from I'll do anything to get power to I want to be happy, I want to have kids. Geralt going from fuck Destiny, it can go screw itself, to alright, cool, Destiny's a thing apparently. Ciri goes from effectively thinking that everyone that she has ever loved is this paragon, basically, to realizing that people can be awful and not everyone's good just because of where they were born. They each have an amazing arc, and it's so much fun to watch how they each grow and change over the season. I'm also going to bring up Yaskier, who you may know as Dandelion if you've played the games or read the books. I could not speak as to why they decided to go with Yaskier for the show as opposed to Dandelion, but every time I ever speak about Dandelion, I'm going to call him Dandelion. Because Dandelion's much more fun to say. Other secondary characters of the show include Calanthe, series grandmother, who she appears multiple times throughout. Mausak the Druid, he also appears a few times. Uh, Dara, he travels with Ciri for a bit before leaving her because he's like, you're gonna get me killed and you're like your grandmother, so screw you. Uh, there's also Triss Marigold, she appears in a few episodes. She also looks a bit different from her in-game model. Oh wait, I see it, it's the hair. Only thing that's different from her at all. Other secondary characters that are slightly important too include East, I think I'm pronouncing that right, not positive. Uh, Ciri's grandfather. Um, Tissaia, the woman that taught Yennefer. 
Uh, Strigobor, a wizard who I absolutely despise because he's a bit of a bastard. Renfrey, she only appears in one episode, sadly, but she's fairly important because she effectively kicks off Garrett's whole uh, destiny plot thing. Istrid, the for a former lover of Yennefer, who's fairly important overall. Uh, Kahir, I think I'm pronouncing that one right? Not positive. Uh, he's the king of Nilfgaard, the one that invades Sintra at the beginning. Uh, and last one that I'm going to name, because it's the only one that I can remember off the top of my head, Fringilla, the mage for, um, uh, Nilfgaard. You remember at the beginning how I said the show had some similarities to Thrones? The number of characters is why. Now, earlier I said that this was based on the books, not the show, or games. So, like the books, this doesn't have a fight every five minutes, unlike the games. So, the show is told mostly through dialogue, and... That's not a bad thing. So, honestly, if you're expecting the show to be like, ah, die, monster, every five minutes, that's not what happens. There are actually relatively few monsters within the scope of the show. Um, he fights more humans than he does monsters. In fact, there's even an episode where he defends a dragon from other hunters. So, because the show is actually more dialogue, less fight-heavy, every fight scene, with an exception of one or two, is really, really, really well done. The only one that I can remember being really wonky was the first one that we see. This massive battle that is a battlefield. It's a lot of shaky cam and whip pans, and so it felt really awkward for me to watch, but at the same time, it also emulates the chaos that is a battlefield. I'm a bit of an amateur swordsman, and so I've been in massive battle type scenarios a few times, and I can very much confirm that that is pretty much what it felt like. Just a lot of chaos, not really knowing what's going on, who's friend or foe. But it does feel really wonky to me to watch. So that is something to keep in mind. Last thing I want to talk about is the show's soundtrack. That is phenomenal. The instrumentals are freaking great. They're so much fun. I've listened to the soundtrack a number of times since finishing it. And I can guarantee you've heard at least one song off of this soundtrack, even if you haven't seen the show. Toss a coin to your witcher which is a great song in and of its own right. I very much enjoy it, but there's another song on this that if you haven't listened to, I highly recommend. It's Her Sweet Kiss, sung at the end of episode five or episode six, can't remember which one. It's another uh, Dandelion song, which um, it's pretty much Geralt and Yennefer's relationship, kind of. Kind of like how Geralt feels that he keeps getting screwed by this. It's a great song, highly recommend it. Uh, and if you somehow haven't heard Toss a Coin to Your Witcher, highly recommend that as well. It's a lot of fun. It's greatly enjoyable to just listen to, and you will get it stuck in your head and sing it all the time, like I do. Also, I apologize if you have seen the show and do know Toss a Coin, it is stuck in your head now. I apologize, it's also stuck in mine. And with all that I've talked about, I want to get back to... The question that I pose in the title of this video, and kind of at the beginning, is this show the next Game of Thrones? I would argue that no, it's not. Now, if you're a fan of Game of Thrones, you are most likely going to enjoy The Witcher. That's just a fact of um, these two shows having similar type plots, with similar characters, and just the fact that in medieval fantasy, if you're into that, you're probably going to like the show. But... These shows are not direct analogs. They can't, I don't think that they can actually be compared to each other in terms of pure, they are basically different um, companies' versions of the same show. The Witcher is much more one-on-one, -on -one, and uh, while it does have three main characters, it tends to focus on a single character and doesn't... The story isn't so massive that you almost need to, like, look up a wiki to follow it. Outside of the confusion of the first season, I had no trouble following who, what character was doing what and when. Now, if Game of Thrones, when I watched that, I actually had a lot of trouble, especially my first time through. And I, I don't know if that's a product of me being who I am or what. So I wouldn't say that The Witcher and The Game of Thrones can be directly compared. But if you like one, you're probably going to like the other. Yeah. That's honestly all I have to say. I highly recommend that you go watch The Witcher right now. I, if I have to give it a score, I'm going to say that it easily rolls at 18. So much fun. Super enjoyable. A few wonky things about it, but overall, just highly enjoyable show. Great fun. And, yeah. 
Right, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Uh, sorry it took me so long to get this out. It was just hard for me to make this video feel like it ever felt right. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Yeah, if you want to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, links are going to be in the description as always. And I hope that you guys have a great day. And as always, peace out.